Hi there, and a very warm welcome to this week's quick tip. So this week, this is something for jewelers or artists that do a lot of product visualization in the jewelry industry. And I guess this is probably something rather helpful. And this is again a topic from the MoCraft Slack. So I am just stealing ideas from there and then just making tutorials about them. Hopefully people don't mind that. So without further ado, let's jump into Cinema 4D. So as you've seen in the intro, we have our scene here where we want to place the diamonds on the Octane logo. Now, why is this so difficult, you ask? Just put them there, you say? Well, let's make this and show you the problem. I already created the jewelry or the diamonds here, so let's unsolo them. And we have our diamonds here. And they sparkle and look really nice. By the way, the measurements of the diamonds are really important, as well as the material. So the sparkliness of the diamond is, like in the real world, very dependent on the material, as well on the exact cut of it. So if you're interested in that, you can find a link in the description where all of those diamonds and the project is available for you to download. Okay, let's see what's happening if I put those diamonds on the logo. Here we go, I just zero that out and then they should fit on the logo. Here we go. Now you can see they are not all too sparkly anymore. And why is that? Well, this is very easily explained. So the diamond, in order to sparkle, needs the light to reflect and refract through its whole body. And right now, our surface is cutting off the diamond at the top. So we only see the ground and not the lower body. Let's turn off rendering for now and let's show you. So this is what's missing in the light refraction and therefore the diamonds don't sparkle. Of course, you can now go ahead and model in all of those holes for every one of those diamonds. But this is a very tedious task that can be solved by a nice trick. Welcome to our simplified scene or even more simplified scene where the logo is now a cube and instead of many diamonds, we just have one diamond. So let's create some basic materials real quick. We need two materials for the two objects. So let's go to materials, create and create a metallic material for the cube. And then we will need a specular material for the diamond. To make the specular material look like a diamond, we need to have the right index, and that's 2.417. And as always with specular materials, go into the transmission and set the transmission to 1. Here we go. Let's apply our diamond material and show you the problem here too. So if I go ahead and select the diamond and move it down, you can see now it's sparkling and the more it moves inside of the object, the more almost solid looking it gets. And I can assure you that diamond is not solid at all. It just looks like that because it sticks inside of the surface of the metal cube. Let's move the diamond back out. So what I want to do is have some sort of render time boolean. And we already touched on that with the clipping material in the nested dielectrics video, because this is part of the nested dielectrics you can see here. So what I want to do is to duplicate that diamond and then scale it a little bit bigger. We will be exaggerating that a little bit just to show you what I want to do. Here we go, 1.1. And if we go to the side view real quick, you can see now that the larger diamond that we scaled up is surrounding the smaller diamond. And this is exactly what we want for Boolean operations. In order to perform a render time Boolean, we need another material and this is the clipping material. So let's go to materials once more, create and then go and make a clipping material. Here we go. So we can assign that right away to the diamond that we made bigger with the scale. Here we go, and if we start rendering again, 
let me load the render, you can see everything is gone. Now, if we take both of the diamonds and move them down, you can see that now we can pull our diamond out of the surface. Now, there's a couple of things I want to address. First of all, there's some strange outlines and some black rims here. And this is because the clipping material has its own ray epsilon. So you can adjust that dependent on your needs for the scene. For me, the ray epsilon I have set for my scene is okay. So I turn off the custom ray epsilon. And as soon as I do that, the black borders here go away. Now, if you ever want your bold geometry to have a different material, you can do that by linking a material here in the intersection slot. So let's do this real quick and duplicate our metal material, go to specular and give it a different color here. So something golden, for example, and link it in there. And you can see then the material manifests itself within the pool. In the example of our Octane logo, we just went with the material that was already on there. So no need to link anything. So I just clear that and delete the material again. So everything works as expected, but there's one thing that's not working. And this is we don't see our diamond right now. And this is basically a thing of priorities again. So the nested dielectric system always works with priorities. So we need to make sure that the diamond has a higher priority than the clipping in order to be not clipped. So let's go into the clipping and let's see what priority it has. It has a priority of 100. This is the highest priority, so it will clip everything. Let's make this lower. So every other object in your scene, if you haven't set your priority, has a priority of zero. So let's make this clipping just a priority of one. Still nothing. And this is because the diamond itself has a priority of zero as well. So we need to rise that priority above one. So let's go to the common here and go to the priority and set it to two. And as soon as I've done that, you can see now we have a sparkling diamond sitting inside of our object. The other cool thing that can be done with the clipping material is to move it inside of a cloner because it is not limited to a normal objects. It can also work with render instances. So let's do this real quick and make a cloner here. And let's make this 15 by 15. Here we go. And let's do the same thing with our other diamond as well. One thing of note here is since we scaled the diamond, the one with the clipping material on, we need to go to our cloner and disable reset coordinates. Otherwise, the clone will be small or the same size as our other diamond. And then we have um, intersections and set fighting again. So it will flicker because the renderer doesn't know whether to render the clipping material or the diamond material because they are sitting directly on top of each other. And if I now render, you can see that we have an array of diamonds now sparkling nicely and working nicely. Of course, there's more than this example that this method of a clipping material might become handy. But because of the question in the forum, I found this example quite nice. And this already concludes this week's quick tip. And I think that's the closest to a quick tip I have ever come. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future tutorials, please let me know in the comments below. I am really counting on you delivering me ideas for future tutorials. On the topic of training, I've been told not a lot of you know, but I do trainings, seminars and sessions for Octane and Cinema 4D. So if you're interested in very in-depth knowledge or you need some new team members brought up to speed, just let me know. You can contact me preferably via mail. Yes, I'm that old school, which is available on my website. Other than that, thank you very much for tuning in this week. And I say goodbye and happy clipping.